Hey guys, it's TF Nut. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have another action figure review. This is going to be of the NECA Back to the Future Ultimate Doc Brown Hazmat Suit or 1985 version. Very excited to finally have this figure in hand. I feel like it's been a while ago since NECA announced this figure and it finally hit stores recently. Looks like Target got it first. It's on their website right now. Hopefully it's still in stock by the time I check and put it in the description. But I found one at a local Target, but I haven't found, you know, many at local Targets. I only found one at a local Target. So keep that in mind. It might be a little bit hard to come by. I fell off on this particular line from NECA a little while ago. I really only got two Martys, you know, the 85 version and the hazmat suit version. I guess I was really holding out for this one. The rest of those figures look great from this series, but I really just wanted the two versions of Doc and Marty that I've always liked, which is, you know, the 85 versions. So you've been seeing a 360 look at the packaging here. Just want to show you some images of what the figure looks like when we open the flap and you can see the figure in the box there. Also wanted to show the top part of the packaging here where it says Back to the Future, you know, the character's name, as well as the version of the character, as well as the cool DeLorean image, as well as warning choking hazards, ages, uh, ages 14 and up. Looking on the bottom here, the list of credits that we get with a lot of NECA figures. And then we have the barcode in case you need it. Let's go ahead and get this figure out of the packaging. And here is Doc out of the packaging. Great figure. I have very minor paint issues and some things with small plastic parts on my particular figure here that I don't think are super ideal, but I am really enjoying this figure a lot. Let's take a look at all the accessories this figure comes with, then we'll take a closer look at the figure. So here are all the different accessories this figure comes with. A lot of nice alternate pieces, alternate parts of the figure, like the arms and the alternate head there. Speaking of the head, I really like this head sculpt. It's very nice smile likeness to Christopher Lloyd. Hopefully the quality of the camera isn't too bad. I have to use my smartphone, as some of you know. Uh, <laughs> trying to do reviews well, until I get my laptop situation figured out. I feel like looking in person, I think for both heads, the paint's a little too cakey. And what I mean by that is that it just is kind of obvious. There's lots of paint applications that they put on the head sculpts to where it just looks like a lot of paint was just layered on there. I don't think it looks horrible on camera, if I'm being honest. And honestly, in person, it doesn't look that bad either. I really like all these details they got, you know, different, you know, crevices of his face, you know, his his eyes i don't think they're using digital printing on the eyes so i mean i could be wrong but if that's all sculpting and paint apps that is really impressive nice creases and wrinkles on the forehead uh bumps blemishes uh you know a little bit of difference it looks like a difference with the skin tone but it's because of um what's growing in on his facial hair they even added some texturing to look like he's he has um, you know facial hair growing in i really like that it looks like the hair looks a little too separated from the rest of the head, but I think it's fine. There's something going on with the whatever's going on here with that glossy part on the paint's not great. But we do have this light yellow and very almost white color going through you know, throughout all the lines and cracks on the hair there. Yeah, I really dig it. Great likeness to Christopher Lloyd. What I also really like about this figure are the alternate arms. I really like that some of these characters lately, uh, I, think, I think mostly Loomis from the Michael and Loomis 2-pack, have alternate arms, you know, pr appropriate for particular scenes and situations. Whatever's going on with the paint on the hand there, that's kind of ugly. I can get that off there. You can see the nice white paint with the wrinkles all throughout, you know, the jumpsuit here, or the hazmat suit, I should say. You have the radioactive signs right there painted nicely in black and you have these more relaxed hands which have a glossy finish to them to make it look like latex so i dig that a lot we also get this alternate hand here if i can hold it uh this is meant for holding the gun since you know he was holding the gun while he had the you know arms and the gloves on in that one scene with the the libyans come in so uh yeah that's really nice speaking of the gun here's that cowboy pistol looking really awesome this is a beautiful piece. Looks like there's a little bit of silver splotched onto the white there and on that little rivet or whatever that is. So that's not entirely ideal. We do have really nice silver paint all throughout these inner workings, you know, on the barrel, on the you know, trigger, hammer, the cylinder. That is a beautifully painted uh, 
a weapon here, it's just a pistol, you know. If you, if you particularly have any cowboy weapon, or uh, characters, I should say, nice weapon for them. We have some alternate hands when he's, you know, in the version he comes packaged with, you know, those arms uh, with the bare hands. These are meant for holding some of those accessories that I'm going to show off in a second. It's mostly just in a skin tone molded. I think there's a little bit of some paint apps on here, uh, but it's mostly molded in this skin tone. Looks a little glossy. You definitely can see some details in the fingernails to dig that. We also have a nice clipboard, which you can sort of, uh, you, I can't really make out whatever words are on here, but there are words painted on there. Even if they're not legible, you know, it adds some nice detail on there. Different color, you know, yellow paper on here, looking really nice and uh, has a black wash on here, looking kind of dirty. The blue on this clipboard, that's what the back looks like with these metal pieces. And then you have those calculators with the different paint apps on the buttons and the silver overall. It looks great. We have the notepad. You can see right there the emblem logo. That's that's awesome. And then, you know, it's folded in a way to where it's supposed to fit one of these hands. I might be, no, it's not this one. It's, I can't remember right now. It's probably going to be this one. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. It has a little bit of some silver on top here. Last but not least is the remote control. It has 88 miles per hour right there on the speedometer. That is sick. Lots of great little inner workings. These things are uh, pretty hard plastic, so don't even try to move them. You'll break them. Lots of great different paint apps, mostly silver and black, but some little, little bit of variation of green and red going on in there. That is really sick. I really like the metallic paint. And there's a little bit of some gray on the back with some red. All of that, look at all the detailing. It looks a little messy, the, the, the sculpting and paint in some areas like these wires. I can forgive it though, because they put a, it's, you can tell they put a lot of effort into the paint and detailing of this. There's the silver on the bottom, giving you a 360 of that. This is just a really nice success. Before we take a look at the actual detail dock, I forgot while I was editing, I need to measure this figure. We're looking at it a little over 19 centimeters tall, which is gonna be like seven and a half inches tall. Pretty standard when it comes to NECA figures. Also this figure, it's really hard for him to stand on his own sometimes. So I recommend if you have those NECA bases that you can get at Target or even the McFarlane Toys bases work for him when it comes to stabilizing the figure. Okay, moving on to Doc's detail, as you can see, really nice wide-eyed, crazy expression. I assume you can fit the other heads on Doc too, if you want to use like a, you know, the screaming heads and some of the figures that he has. I'm sure you could. I don't own those figures to show right now. One thing I want to mention is in person and on camera, the skin tones are very much different. You can see it looks a little bit more matte on his face compared to. A little bit more glossier and a lighter tone on the neck so it doesn't match up in skin tone unfortunately again great likeness to christopher lloyd though those wide eye expressions you know the the paint on the uh eyebrows the creases on his forehead you can see aren't as prominent as say you know in the middle there you can notice on his forehead that they're not as prominent as this head here still looks pretty good what a nice frown he's got going on there Similar paint apps going on with the hair, with the yellow and the white. Overall, I think that this you know, neutral head sculpt that he comes with, I wouldn't say neutral, but it's the head sculpt that he comes packaged with. It's really nice. One of the other accessories that was mentioned on the box is this stopwatch. Uh, you can see it has, I believe that's 118. So, you know, the idea, I'm guessing this whole tool bag can come off. I'm not gonna risk that right now, just in case I end up breaking something. I mean, these arms are removable, so that's good. If you do wanna take it all off, uh, of course you could pop the head off since it comes with an alternate head, and then you can you know, remove this off the neck strap there. But I'm just leaving it on here for now, just to show you the, that red paint with the gray and black. Uh, this does have, it's pretty thin, soft, rubbery type plastic to where it feels pretty soft to where it warps and wants to fold like that. So that's a little unfortunate. I like whatever's going on with, uh, I guess that badge right here. Oh, that looks good with the silver. Nice detailing, the pens right there. Could be a little bit better, but I mean, the fact that I can recognize that those are pens is fine. You could see his shirt underneath his jump, uh, hazmat suit. I keep saying jumpsuit, but you see that green shirt with the white, a little bit of red in there, it's like a off white undershirt. Now let's talk about the actual detailing as you see all throughout the jumpsuit. I keep calling it a jumpsuit, 
but it is painted in white. I, it's mostly molded in this color, but you do have those paint applications of white to bring out those details of the wrinkles. A little bit of a black wash in some areas. It's very subtle, but you can tell it's there. And you also have that hazmat logo. I actually bought my camera. Hazmat logo painted in black there. There are some areas mostly like on the back here, a little bit there that splotch a little bit. And this rubbery piece was molded in like, you know, in transit, I guess, or out of the factory to where it bends like this. I put some hot air to that and it should bend back just fine, but it likes to, you know, crease like that. It's not supernatural and all that. And we do have a little bit of like some dirt. That's not too bad. You know, it looks, you know, his jumpsuit could be a little dirty. Some of the paint app issues I'm mostly talking about is that it looks like when the, whatever they put over his finger here, these things that interlock there there is some black paint splotching going on the finger so that's a little unfortunate we have a little bit of i think some dry brushing or a wash going on to these the, the off-white shirt on the under undershirt here with the uh, gloves off pretty nice silver watch uh let's take a look at the rest of the you know the tool bag we have the nice brown with a black wash a very subtle black wash throughout some parts Measuring tape here, lots of nice screwdrivers, pliers, you name it. Can't name exactly what all is on here right now, but a lot of it is sculpted on here. If you actually need tools, I think some Jason figures got you covered there. So that's cool. I have a little bit of a clothes pin right there. A little bit of gold on that buckle too with some nice black paint on the belt. Whatever this is for the stopwatch, we have the silver and some black on here. Uh, I, I feel like that no i thought there was like a, sw a ball joint swivel on here to where it moves around but i don't think that's what that's for i don't think there's any kind of moving at all i mean you can move it around right now but there's not like a ball joint hinge or anything that's what i'm trying to say now we get down to the lower torso we have a pocket with some orange right there with the other one too you also can see where that zipper area would be again lots of great details in the creases and wrinkles throughout the whole jumpsuit. That includes going down to the lower torso. Yeah, there's not much to say. It's a, I definitely feel paint on this figure. This is definitely paint. It's not, so it's nice that they went the extra mile. Like they all, they usually do where it's molded in a certain color and they add the extra paint to bring out these uh, sculpted details. You know, the inner legs, that lining going all the way down on the inner thighs and on the outer thighs too. You see there. Then we get down to the caps these nice trimming or whatever this is stitching going on all the way around i really like the wrinkles around the calves going all the way down here and then you do have the um that really bright orange on, on the front of the shins looks like there's some black here too which has some nice sculpting and some wrinkles they actually i don't think the sculpting is the greatest but there's some white here to make it look like it's he's wearing socks the bright brown loafers whatever these are look great a little bit of variation of like some a black wash there i feel like there's some white in here too or that could be you know missing paint we do have this white seam line or whatever it is it's supposed to be going all the way around the sole i guess the back of the shoes even have some detailing and some paint top you can see i guess these are laces these look more like straps than anything the bottom of the feet doesn't have a lot of treading, but they do have accurate paint on the bottom of the shoes with the orange right there. I'm wondering if this little piece right here, that is a soft plastic, I'm going to try to take that off if it's any safe to do. It should be safe to do because, yeah, I mean, it should be because you have to change some of the hands around. So hopefully I don't break this though. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to have to see if I can clean that up on my own. If not, then yeah, that's kind of a problem with the black splotching all over the fingers. It could look like his fingers are dirty from work, but... I don't know. It's not super ideal to me. The, everything else besides the minor pain imperfections, you know, this figure is incredibly good looking. One thing I will say that isn't amazing about this figure is the articulation. You know, Doc's not the most agile character. You don't need that much articulation, but it is pretty hindered in some areas. We're going to start off with the head. We have a ball joint that goes does go side to side. That side to side motion is really good. The up is fantastic. Look at that. The down, I feel like it go a little bit better. I think there's a separate joint at the neck, yeah, and going into the body there. So it allows for a little bit better motion with that added 
neck articulation. So that's really good. Arms are a little stiff, but they go outward that much. And they do go all the way around here. And we do have a single joint elbow that does get a little over 90 and it swivels here at the elbow, swivel at the wrist, hinge at the wrist. This is for all sets of hands he comes with. There should be some type of ab articulation, like a ball joint or maybe a swivel, but this whole jumpsuit will get in the way of that. You cannot swivel at all. It's all one piece here and it's all, you know, connected here. Uh, it's just one piece and you're not going to get a lot of articulation. So just be prepared for a little bit of disappointment in the, uh, you know, torso region. But because this is a soft plastic, you do get, oh, wow, actually you don't get that much forward on the legs. Back decent amount though we do have slight splits there it kind of breaks up the sculpt a bit upper thigh swivel is pretty good actually we do have single jointed knees that's usually the standard for NECA figures unfortunately even if they have double jointed elbows sometimes most of the time they will have single joint knees sometimes they have double joints but I can't recall when they would we do have a swivel here at the leg so that way you know you can move that all around a little bit though this whole black piece here does swivel on its own, so that's cool. Downward motion on the ankle is awesome. Upward motion is also really sick. And then you do have ankle rockers. For size comparisons, as you can see with some NECA figures, he actually is pretty tall compared to some characters, like a teenage character, like Marty, of course. He actually kind of towers over Marty. Over on the right, that is the Evil Dead 1 version of Ash Williams, and he's also pretty tall compared to Ash there. And of course, Doc is going to be really tall compared to six inch hasbro figures like marvel legends black suit spider-man as well as the first ever version of mando overall i am very happy with this figure i think NECA knocked it out of the park again like they usually do minor paint imperfections on my figure you know they're not ideal i've been calling out marvel legends for their paint imperfections lately it's only fair that i do it here too but they are nowhere near as bad you know as some of the recent marvel legends i've gotten they're really not that bad on this figure Articulation is not amazing, particularly in the torso region, mainly because of that soft plastic overlay from the hazmat suit. And maybe one more extra head, like a screaming head, would have been nice for this figure. But everything that this figure comes with is definitely worth the $35 price point, as well as the detail and paint on this figure. It's fantastic, say for minus, you know, the different paint variation going on with the face and the neck and that skin tone not entirely match this is such a nice figure that i think really scratched the itch that i've been waiting for for a while i think it's worth the wait this i could have gotten a previous doc figure but i was really holding out for this particular version i'm glad i waited it's fantastic not much more else i could say i'm seeing the praises of this figure 35 bucks to around that price range and uh, i got mine from a local target Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below what you think about the figure, what you think about the review. Leave a like, share amongst your friends, follow me, Instagram for more content over there, and I'll see you guys later.